Okay, now we're going to talk about pulmonary tuberculosis, and you've probably always heard it called TB. Um, it's a bacterial infection that's caused by N. tuberculosis. Um, the incidence in the U.S. is declining significantly, although it is increasing in its incidence in African nations. Um, it's the leading cause of death from an infectious disease, um, especially among those who have HIV. Um, HIV coupled with tuberculosis um, can really um, basically pose a death sentence to that patient. It's, it's very, very hard to treat. Um, the bacteria can live in the dark for months as spores, so you could have been introduced to the tuberculosis um, bacteria months before you ever noticed anything um, as far as signs and symptoms go. The spores can live in particles of sputum. Um, exposure to direct sunlight, heat, or UV light, though, can kill those spores. So, if you think you might have been exposed to tuberculosis, the best thing you can do, do is go stand outside in the sun, maybe open your mouth, uh, you know, <laughs> something, just to get those UV rays um, on those spores and hopefully kill them out. Um, and that is something that is actually one of the most effective things in preventing the infection from actually spreading and growing. It's transmitted via droplets. Um, and so anytime you have somebody who you know is infected with tuberculosis, they need to be on droplet precautions. Of the people who are infected though, only a very, very small number of people actually become ill with tuberculosis. The people who are at risk are people who are like us, healthcare workers. We're around sick things all the time. Um, people who are malnourished, who live in overcrowded areas like, um, you know, really packed cities like New York City where a ton of people live in a very small um, area. Um, people who live in, they call them poor houses in your book. Um, we probably have called them the projects or whatever. And um, a lot of times all that's talking about is people who live um, in very confined spaces with a large number of people. Um, and that's why I talk about like New York City or Hong Kong where there's a ton of people in a really confined space. Those people are just at so much more risk of developing um, the bacteria. Um, and also patients who are immunocompromised already, people who have HIV or AIDS, um, people who have cancer, um, and people who have any other autoimmune disorder. The signs and symptoms are vary quite a bit, and they're pretty vague, and a lot of times they're really overlooked until they get very severe. Um, a lot of times the onset is pretty gradual, but you're going to start noticing some fatigue, maybe some anorexia and weight loss, um, a slight non-productive cough initially. Um, and a low-grade fever, and then as it gets worse, you're going to start noticing night sweats, the cough becoming very productive, purulent, and blood-streaked. Um, you also might start noticing some hemoptysis and dys dyspnea in the later stages as well, and at that point, they're going to also be experiencing um, quite a bit of chest pain. To diagnose it, we got to do this TB skin test, or the Manto test is the technical term for that, uh, and that determines if you're infected. Um, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily determine if you have active disease or not. If you have been um, infected at all, um, you could have a positive TB skin test. Um, I'm sure maybe one of you has ever seen or experienced a positive TB test. My roommate in nursing school actually had a positive um, skin test. That doesn't mean that she developed tuberculosis, it just meant that she was exposed to it. She got the spores somewhere in her body and she had to have a chest x-ray to confirm or um, deny that she actually had tuberculosis. So when she got the chest x-ray, it was clear, and so she was fine. Um, so if you ever do have a positive TB test, or you see a patient that has one, or a coworker, or whatever, don't start calling them, hey, TB person, because they don't necessarily have TB. It just means they were exposed, okay? Which puts you at risk of being exposed also, but a chest x-ray is needed to confirm, okay? So the chest x-ray, um, Confirms, and then we probably will end up getting a CT scan and an MRI to really look at the lungs and see um, how extensive the infection is. A sputum culture is best if it's obtained in the morning time because that's um, when a lot of that bacteria and everything has been allowed to settle in their sputum. Um, so we get a clearer um, culture early in the morning. Um, a bronchoscopy, a gastric lavage, or gas gastric aspiration is used if the patient is not really able to raise up their own sputum on their own. Some people um, aren't able to do that. They can't just cough and spit something out. Um, it's like they just don't have that reflex or something. And so a lot of times we have to go in there and actually take the sputum out in order to culture it. Um, the uh, treatment for tuberculosis is a combination of drugs. Okay, and we won't go into those specifically. Um, 
but what you need to know about the tuberculosis treatment is that it speeds recovery, but it does not guarantee a cure for that patient. Um, it stunts the growth of the bacteria and allows their body to start recovering. Um, and especially if you're combining two or more drugs, the drug toxicity actually decreases. Now that's opposite of what we think whenever we're combining drugs. Typically when we combine drugs, drug, to drug toxicity goes up. But in tuberculosis, the, the different tuberculosis medications, when you take them in conjunction with each other, the chances of having drug toxicity actually goes down, which I think is really remarkable. Um, if it's primarily located in one section of the lung, they might go in and just remove that section of the lung. Um, they can do a segmental resection, a web, wedge resection, lobectomy, or a total pneumonectomy. You can live with just one lung. Now, you might not be able to um, you know, do physical activity as well as you used to be able to, but you still can live with one lung. Um, you want to make sure that um, whenever a patient is put on tuberculosis medications for treatment, that they take all of their medications. Now, I know that you know this with antibiotics, that it's very important, but it's the same thing with tu tuberculosis. It is a bacterial infection, so they are going to be put on several different antibiotics, um, but we have to make sure that they take them all, okay? Here's a little um, mnemonic device to help you remember tuberculosis. They will experience fatigue, malaise, anorexia, weight loss, cough, cough, um, which is typically productive, um, hemoptysis, night sweats, low grade temperature, um, and then here it shows you that the TB medications, they might be on them for 18 to 24 months. They might be on bed rest until they have no symptoms, respiratory isolation, until they have a negative sputum culture, and um, frequently they're seen on an outpatient basis. Um, to diagnose it, we'll do a TB skin test, a chest X-ray, chest X-ray, and bacteriologic studies. Okay, here's a question. Pause it. See if you know. Okay, here are the answers. Check yourself. Make sure you understand, um, and then we will move on.